Okay. There you go. There you go. All right. <laughs> okay. I just, you know, I don't know if you guys went to, I'm just going, I went to Wikipedia and uh, there are, on Mulholland Drive, it's 31 pages. Obviously, we're not going to do that. I just thought I'd just hit a few uh, things and then we can talk about it because I don't want to spend time on on this stuff that you can already, if you want, you can see. Okay, uh, Mulholland Drive, uh, 2001 Surrealist, neo-noir mystery film written and directed by David Lynch. And we know all the stars. It was American-French uh, uh, co-production, originally conceived as a television pilot, and then um, the guys decided that uh, they didn't like the idea of a of a, a ongoing uh, movie, so he made uh, the ending, um, making it a feature film. Uh, it's off, off, often regarded as Lynch's finest work, and uh, many people consider it one of the greatest movies <laughs> of all time. It's won numerous, numerous awards. Uh, it... Um, it was directed, of course, and written by uh, David Lynch. Um, the cinematography and the addition, uh, Peter Deming, Mary Sweeney. And the music was uh, Angelo Badalamenti, who also played the cowboy. I don't know if you knew that. Um, oh, huh. Yeah, he did, which was weird. Plus, the, the clothing that he wore was actually Tom Mix's actual clothing. So, and you know who Tom Mix is and kind of the original cowboy. Yeah, so Jeff Arthur doesn't. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> well, it's all, be that was before all of our time, but we know who Tom Mix is. Um, okay. So everybody, of course, calls this movie weird, oddball, crazy. Nah, blah, blah, blah. They all have all of that. And I'm dying to hear what you guys all thought. Um, but um, extensively, um, he presents a film that challenges viewers to suspend belief uh, of what they are experiencing. Um, many of the characters are archetypes, um, cliched. Uh, some people consider it just an, an ode to old movies and what's happened to movies, old time movies. Uh, some people connected to Sunset Boulevard, if you're familiar with that film. Interestingly enough, you know, when she's in her, when she gets in the accident, when Camilla or Rita gets in the accident, she passes over Sunset Boulevard. And then what I found out later is that the place where the cowboy meets the director in that road that you know, the end of the Hollywood Hills kind of. It actually was the intersection of of um, that street, uh, the Mulholland Drive and Sunset Boulevard. And that's where that corral is. So I, that was kind of interesting too. Um, let's see. Uh, I can, oh, made the, uh, it, it cost 15 million made only 20 million uh, although i'm sure it's made a lot in uh you know dvds and that kind of stuff uh, uh an abc executive recalled uh i remember the creepiness of this woman in this horrible horrible crash and david te teasing with us the notion that people are chasing her she's not just in trouble she is trouble Obviously, we asked what happens next, and David Lynch said, you have to buy the pitch for me to tell you. So that's why he lost it, basically. Um, but then he ended up thinking at the end of it, he thought, this is the way the movie was supposed to be in the, be in the beginning. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's too much, too much. I won't go into it. But, um well, that's all. That's all I'll do right now. And I, did everybody watch it? By the by, everybody saw it. Great, I great, great. It, and it yeah. was the first time I'd seen it too. Oh, it's first time. Okay. Any other first timers? Uh, I, in full disclosure, I only got to start watching it today. Actually, a few hours ago, when I 
I still have 27 minutes left. So oh it doesn't my God. I, don't, I don't care about <laughs> oh. Don't worry about a spoiler or anything. I, okay, I've been confused through a lot of it anyway. Uh, <laughs> Two weeks right. in a row. Well, Pete, <laughs> let me ask you do, you, do you think you know what happens? What, what? Uh, no, no, I don't, but that's okay. That, that's okay. Yeah, that's the, that's a whole, it's okay, whatever, whatever I, you think. I can't tell you, I did have a favorite scene in the first two hours, but I won't go into that. <laughs> I've been in, no. But anyway. Okay, so, well, so what did you think? Anyone? Let's we'll start with Terry. Terry's an expert on this movie. He knows all about it. That's... All right, Terry. Well... I'd watched it so many times before that I didn't watch it this time. Okay. So, and surrealism, of course, is a big thing in art school and art and everything. So, I really relate to it that way. Um, I just, <clears throat> as with many movies, there's just particular scenes that uh, stay with me. Um, you know, the car wreck. Uh, the pink paint, uh, smashing the gangsters' Cadillac with the golf clubs. Um, of course, uh, Naomi Watts and her lover on the couch. Um, yeah, it's just you know, it in a way it doesn't make any sense, of course, and that's kind of the hallmark of surrealism. Yeah. But, uh, it's just a fun, a fun watch. So yeah. Terry, I, I got to ask you a question, Terry. My wife and I were watching this together, and at the very beginning, when the you have the head-on collision with the peep, the kids going down the hill, and they smash into the limousine, and Rita just gets out and walks down the street. We we kind of quoted you. This could never happen. This could never happen. <laughs> just, just don't get out of a limousine and just walk down the street, as big as you please, like nothing ever happened there. So we actually channeled you while we were watching the movie. Okay, well, it it in, in a surreal movie, anything in a David Lynch movie, anything can happen. <laughs> that that is so true. Yeah, so, so what most people the 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 interpretation that a lot of people give it, and I don't say that this is correct, but some people think, of course, that Diane Selwyn, the movie is actually about Diane Selwyn, and and. Um, Betty is her idealized ingenue self that um, would love to have had, uh, you know, have you know, just was all excited about becoming a movie star and being on the big screen and all that. And so that's kind of the what they think. And, and by the end, she is so guilty for killing um, Camilla. Or Rita or whomever, then uh, you know that she kills herself. I mean, that's kind of what you know. If you want to, if you want to try to make sense of it, but then there's so many things in there that don't make sense. That you know, that's just one of the one of the the interpretations. Uh, another interpretation was that uh, uh, Betty and Camilla were one in the same person. And that when you see the scene where they where Camilla puts on the the or Rita, I guess, I mean, you know, you know what I mean, uh, puts on yeah. the blonde wig, that the that that's actually and they look so much alike, uh, that they're actually the same person. And it's a split personality thing. So I mean that you could go on and on about all the different uh, interpretations. But uh, that's kind of why I like it. It's one of those movies I saw, it, you know, first time 20 years ago, and then saw it again after that. And I always had questions. And did this mean this or did this mean this? And that's kind of how I, you know, that's why I picked it. Anyway. Anybody uh, notice that when the limo, since we're at the beginning, the limo's going down Mulholland Drive and they keep going to the license plate number. And the license plate was, Two G A T one two three. Did that mean anything, or was that just a MacGuffin? Or huh. there were like four or five shots. So I was trying to pay attention to what they were paying attention to, and I wrote that one. Huh. I, I couldn't find anything on it, so it was probably just nothing. Yeah, it's like the car kept going out of focus, and then it would 
focus in on another car, you know, the same car, but a different shot of it. And it would do that over and over and over again. Yeah. But yeah, that's called a license plate meant. It's called a lynch herring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. It is. Um, herring. You know, I, I enjoyed the movie a lot. I mean, I think the two actresses were really good. Um, I wish they'd put a disclaimer or a notice or something at the beginning that says, this movie doesn't make any damn sense, but just enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could. They they could have. And by the end, you know, it makes no sense or it makes a lot of sense or whatever. Um. David Lynch said that it's a, a movie that makes sense. I mean, he said it's, it makes sense, but he, David Lynch said it. So, you know, really, <laughs> David, because, you know, it, it's, it's hard. It, it's hard to imagine him saying it makes sense because to me, it seems like whatever your interpretation is, is what it is. And you'll walk away with questions no matter what. He did have those 10 clues. I sent you guys that. Um, I kind of went through them. Uh, I don't know if they actually mean anything at all. I think that could be another um, lynch herring, <clears throat> as you so <laughs> uh, rightly put it. Um, uh, the appearances of the red lampshade, uh, the color red, all of that is in the dream sequences. But um, uh, the red lampshade was right next to the ashtray, which was right next to the phone. And the first time we see it, it's not answered. The second time we see it, it's answered by Diane. So the first time I, my interpretation was just that the first time you saw it is that this wasn't, this wasn't the real, that, that nobody answered it because uh, uh, this wasn't, this was, not Diane. It was um, it was Betty, and you know it was not something that she was going. It, it wasn't Diane, and so that's why it was never answered. At least that's what I thought. Anybody think? What did you think? I always, oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. Go. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just wondering what you guys thought. Well, I I started out. You know, I knew this was a David Lynch film, and I know how that is, but. You know, in a movie like this, you kind of want to have some anchor where you um, there's something that you can believe is real. And um, I worked on that for a while, but then I came to realize that that's not going to happen. Yeah. So you kind of have to just accept that there's going to be a, a blur of reality and, and things are going to come and go and things that don't seem to make sense, sort of make sense. That whole scene in the first where the guy was sitting in the restaurant talking to the other guy, talking about the scene that had happened in his deja vu before the uh, character in the street that was horrendous looking. Yes. Uh, there, so there was that creepy person, which didn't really show up again. And then there was the old lady who came up to the door uh, of the uh, apartment they were in and yeah. was she was she disoriented but she was also sort of like an oracle she was kind of talking about things that were going to happen and you could kind of think well she's probably right um and then there's david lynch likes that diminutive fellow it's i don't know yes what the the one that was a a uh, munchkin yeah and he um he always is in some kind of a sort of mysterious controlling role where he right. kind of is pulling the strings on things going on. So you wonder how much of what was happening was under his control because he, in other Lynch productions, that same guy has done that same kind of thing. He did that a lot in Twin Peaks. Um, I, you know, there are some familiar things there. Even like the light bulb at the corral that was crackling and popping and coming off and on and so forth, that goes way back to uh, uh, the early stuff that Lynch did. Like, uh, what was the his college project? I'm forgetting what Eraser it was head. called. Eraser, Eraser head. head. Oh, yeah. Eraser yeah. head. Yes. Yes. 
Um, so he, he's got, he adopted some techniques that he's kept all along and, and, but, uh, that racer head was in black and white and, and this movie was brilliantly colored. It was brightly, I mean, it was oversaturated in the production. I thought it was, um, striking the women behind Jeff are kind of an example of that, that they were so, yeah. um, um, brightly, you know, they were, they're distinct Saturated. from everything around yeah. them. Yeah. This scene behind me where he had the two faces overlapping and kind of the lips were touching, the noses were almost touching and, you know, they were kind of, you know, they're kind of blended with each other. So yeah, they are, look sort of like the same person from two different angles. And it reminded me a little bit of a Picasso thing where he would take the, the face and kind of turn it at a right angle on itself. And, um, I don't know. What do you think about that, Terry? Is that a valid looks, observation? Looks, looks just like a Picasso to me. Same thing, profile and yeah. frontal view. Yeah. Um, so I, I found it very interesting that way, but in terms of a take-home lesson from this movie, I don't think I have one. Yeah. I I don't think there is a... I don't, I don't think there is. I think you're just always questioning it. Every time... I've seen it. I end up asking different questions. You know, yeah. wait a minute. You know, was she this or was she that? Was it? Yeah. So yeah, uh, I, it, I'm glad. It, it, unless this well, is I took away in the last 27 minutes. Um, what was this? What was the deal with the when they get up in a taxi at two in the morning and go to the the theater? Oh, was the that, Club was, Silencio. Yeah. Was there? Did that? Did some was that explained at the end or well, uh, you know well, was, that's fine. I'm just uh, well, yeah. I'm well, well, the, watch the MC done. there is saying this is all an illusion. He's telling he's he's confessing that everything you're seeing is an illusion. So he's letting right. us know that. And then uh, the song that the lady sings was uh, crying, crying from uh, yeah, and, and it. Uh, she did phenomenally well, I thought. I just was like blown away when she was singing. I thought she, and that actually that's her claim to fame. And it was um, David Lynch had heard about her singing this. He went to her apartment and recorded her. He, she sang a cappella, uh, um, you know, right in front of him. And he he recorded it, and that's the recording that he uses in the movie. And remember, she, you know, after you think she's singing it, and then the next thing you know, she's fallen, and it still keeps going. And she's obviously not singing it again, all an illusion. But that that was good. Yeah, um, Pete. The last twenty seven minutes, I'm guessing, is that uh, you the the response the the. The two girls have a response in the movie. I mean, in the theater, and then there's a woman with blue hair that's behind in the like the yeah. opera seats. Yeah, and blue is a big, you know, big the blue key and the blue key and the blue box and all that, and that's all uh, reality switched around as well. Um, and you'll probably, and then you probably already, you know, Aunt Ruth. According to Betty, um, she's just away making a movie. And uh, Ruth, according to Diane, is dead. And she got $125,000 uh, and her apartment. So um, maybe not her apartment, but she got the 125000 And that's how she was able to pay the hitman to kill Camilla. The uh, the two gentlemen at the beginning that Jeff alluded to, where they they walk outside the restaurant and he sees that that character. I mean, did, did he die? I saw him reach yes. down and put. He, did he died. Well, that's yeah? what the that's what the consensus is. I don't you know know, but yeah, that he died. And that person, um, again, you probably won't know this, Pete, but that person is a woman. First of all, it's a woman. And number two is that um, at the end of the movie, he's got the the blue box that that blue key that Camilla had at the beginning fits into. Okay. 
So fair enough. Again, um, uh, what did the blue box? What was that representing? Do you think? You know, what what I thought is kind of reality, and right. and illusion. So when you got the key to it, you went you jumped from dream into reality once that was opened. And that's just again, you know, that's just my theory. Um, the thing I also that I really liked is when when um, Betty is doing the scene that she's the audition scene and she's doing with it with Camilla. She's kind of, you know, there it's terrible. The scene is terrible. You know, she's saying it and, and, and Camilla is saying words and it's nothing. It's a nothing scene. And then when she actually does it with Chad Everett, you really do see her talent. It's like, Oh my God, she made that. I thought that scene was phenomenal. Uh, the way she did it. And that's when I thought, <clears throat> well, maybe, you know, Betty really is this wonderful actress or Diane is this wonderful actress and playing the part of the ingenue, but really she's a phenomenal actress. But she won a jitterbug contest and it sounded like she had no acting experience. And just had in these eyes that she was going to become a star because, you know, she won a jitterbug contest. So, um, I don't know. Well, I, I saw the jitterbug contest and I was, after I'd watched it already, I went back to the jitterbug contest and, and Diane or that character is not in the jitterbug scene. No. So it made me wonder if she was even, if that was even really part of her past or not. She, she wasn't was in that Ontario. part, that's true. Yeah. And uh, again, it could be, you know, uh, you know maybe she, she didn't win anything. Maybe that's just her dream is this is how I get to L.A., you know, mm -hmm. or Hollywood. But well, the one thing uh, <clears throat> the one thing I really learned from this movie is it's really hard to make a good cup of espresso. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, you know, and yeah, and if you're going to act, make it real, okay? If you're going to be an actor, make it real. <laughs> the two big lessons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it was, was funny. What was the character <laughs> arc of the espresso? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> not here. Your pick on it. Oh God! It never anyway. got better. Apparently. Oh, well, you know, you what think? I thought was interesting too, in light of, I mean. You know, we're, it's all talking about the underbelly of of uh, Hollywood. And then, um, uh, what's his name? Harvey. You know, that comes out and it's like, oh, my God. I, I mean, it was kind of an, a known, you know, it was known that that was what was happening with the, you know, the casting couch and all that stuff. Uh, but I just thought it was interesting that the Me Too movement and Harvey came you know, you know, substantially later, but still, they finally kind of, um, kind of put that in the light anyway to to that everybody know what he was doing. So, just a added thought. Uh, one of the questions that he said that he asked was, "Did talent alone help Camilla?" And I don't think so. That's me. I don't think so. But Mike Mahoney, I haven't heard from you. What did you, did you hate it? You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Yeah, this is uh, from my way, as far <clears throat> as I know, the first David Lynch movie I've ever seen. Um, and oh. I, and <laughs> And I didn't. Uh, I didn't watch the uh, the the TV show uh, at, at all. Twin Peaks. Yeah. So um, I mean, I, I knew I knew it was on, and I, I know people that were big fan, uh, fans of it, but uh, it wasn't me. Um, it, it was, you know, obviously very difficult to follow. the uh, The only thread that I thought I picked up 
uh, at all on it uh, it was the scene behind Copeland here where their two images are are meshed together and I which I think is the shot the shot of the film uh, and led me to believe that maybe this is just one person um, uh, being uh, being illustrated here and that you know the whole thing was some sort of disconnected dream and so i had a great deal of difficulty following it and um um was i'm real interested to hear what people think uh think about it here because you guys are able to draw more out of it than, than i am i but yeah i've only seen it once i understand now why people go back and watch it two three yeah. four five five times uh, because there's uh, different layers in it, I had a lot. I had a lot of difficulty with it. So. Yeah, I think we all do, though. I mean, I remember watching it, going, "Huh, <laughs> huh?" Yeah, but it's it, uh... the one thing uh, Copeland said that, that would have been really helpful was if it would have had some sort of anchor. And if there was one there, I didn't catch it. Uh, and so there is none. That I can, there's I got, no anchor. I got done with it and, and called it not film noir, but film no. Just, <laughs> um, it, it's a it's a wonderful variety of dream sequences. And yeah. some of them you can see play back and some of them they cheat and they go three quarters of the way through the movie and then they show you what was happening back there. Mm -hmm. I could... Like Mahoney said, you could watch it twenty times, and and not find all the threads right. to tie things together. I have you know when idea. I when I talked to Gary, because Gary said he wasn't going to make it, and I had uh, and he and he told me that he forgot to tell all of you guys, and and on his way driving to Detroit, he called and he said, "Well, I figured let's." You know, I just watched it. Let's talk about it. He said, all the guys that make fun of my arc, you know, character arc. He said, yeah, yeah, I couldn't find one on this one. <laughs> I went, yeah. I mean, you can find, I mean, the obvious with Diane and, and Betty, but I mean, he couldn't, he said it was, you know, it wasn't kind of a movie. He seemed to like it. Um, well, like it, I guess is the wrong word, but whatever the word is. Um, he seemed to enjoy it. And the reason why I, I, I picked it is because I, you know, I do <clears throat> think the way he shoots things, the music, the, uh, the constant questions in your head is kind of an interesting, just interesting to me, you know, um, that you can, uh, you can see so many different interpretations of this movie and they're probably all right or all wrong you know whatever but. so the uh, anarchist in me wants to see if we can break ai by asking chat gpt to explain this movie <laughs> actually that's a good idea please explain <laughs> what the heck it means <clears throat> yeah yeah it'll be interesting yeah, i should do that it'd be interesting to see what uh what uh, AI uh, chat GPT would say, but I watched I a couple of the uh, of uh, YouTube videos after it was over just to see if I could figure out what I'd just seen, and I think both of them had that theory that uh, she was a failing actress, you know that yeah. that uh, finally committed suicide, and I would say I would say I'd have to go for that and and that the film was about failing in, in Hollywood. And Hollywood being the, yeah, the, the dark Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. That's what a lot of people, I mean, that's, that's a pretty, that's pretty much what a lot of people think. It's just Diane's <laughs> Diane is actually the star and this, all these other characters are just dreams and parts of her personality. Yeah, there are a lot of good YouTube videos that try to pick it apart and do pretty good. Yeah. I, I did notice that a lot of them were nearly as long as the movie. 
I sit there going, <laughs> I don't got another hour and a half to sit here and watch it. I know. Well, like, like I said, it, it, Wikipedia alone has 31 pages on it. I, w- I was thinking just, about what the minutes will look like from this one. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's going to be. Uh, Maybe like Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be yeah. tough. It might take me a while. Voluminous. <laughs> yeah. I just got on. I did roll, like you, know? Bill. I, I watched a YouTube video and it was like 35 minutes long or something. And I'd already watched two hours and 20 minutes or whatever. So I was into three hours and I was still, Jesus, who knows what's going on here? But yeah. They had lots of they had lots of theories that uh we, we've all covered. again. Uh who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Uh, the one I watched happened to say that the, the the troll behind the Winkies or whatever was Diane. Yeah, that's another theory that that yeah. you know that's her darker and side, like, and that my head was just spinning at that point, and I was like, yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, well, it's a woman that plays that character, right? Uh, this, that, this person too also said like that that first scene. You have to imagine that that scene that the you know, one guy is Diane and one guy oh. is Rita. You know, if you do that, it makes more sense. And the, the dogs are watching the birds and the bird feeders. <laughs> hmm. But anyway, it was, uh, I saw there was like, I don't know how many were there, Bill. There's like at least a dozen of them that were. Uh, videos? Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch. Oh, yeah, there's tons. Well, everybody has their. And, you know, maybe the point is just to watch it. And that's kind of how I enjoy, you know, if you're going to enjoy it. And again, I use that term loosely um, because it's all the questions that come up. And I don't have the answers, but I like that it makes me question. And I like that it makes me think about different things like that. And, you know, and it doesn't have a beginning, middle, and end. There's no such thing in a David Lynch film. So, you know, you just kind of roll with the punches, at least I think. But <laughs> Donna, I'm glad just... you guys watched it. I'm sorry if you all hated it. I said that just tonight I was thinking, oh, my God, they're going to vote me out of the <laughs> the league. <laughs> Please Donna, I, I realized that, that your Harvey reference, you were talking about Harvey Weinstein. I was trying to yeah. think what Harvey the Invisible Rabbit in the Jimmy Stewart movie had to do. Oh. <laughs> I was looking for the connection there. I could, couldn't it, find it, it. It makes <laughs> as much sense. <laughs> yeah. And then how many times did the cowboy walk by when Harvey was there? <laughs> yeah, the cowboy. That was uh, That was weird. Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you guys. So the little mun, you know, the munchkin, the guy that plays that that was a munchkin, and then he plays all of that character. He act. David Lynch made him wear prosthetic arms and legs, so that his head looked incredibly small. Why I don't know, <laughs> but I just thought that was so strange. It's like you've got you've got a a little. I guess the the politically correct term is little person i think you've got a little person there that would have been strange enough and yet he makes he makes him a, a you know real long arms and long legs in that wheelchair with a tiny little head so maybe that Was means he speaking through like uh, one of those artificial uh, voice box things it's, or some kind of speaker or something he was talking through mm-hmm. I, I think his voice was like processed. I didn't really see the the point of that. That's the point. <laughs> there is no point. <laughs> That's the thing. How, how do you um, it compared to other David Lynch movies? I mean, I've seen I've seen Twin Peaks. I've seen Blue Velvet. I've never seen Eraserhead. Oh my God. But I mean, if you I remember saw it when I was in college and it was just weird, weird, bizarre. Yeah. I uh, like Blue Velvet. That was a good flick. Yeah. That, Blue Velvet I, was, that was interesting. terribly hard to follow. Yeah. yeah that's was fun. With... But it, it Nicolas really... Cage was in one too with Laura Dern, I think. 
I can't remember the name of it right now. Inland Empire. There you go. Inland Empire. Was it good? Oh, I, didn't, I never I, saw that. The different one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's discombobulated also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, um, Twin Peaks for sure ended up bizarre at the end. I mean, you know, I for, kind of forget, didn't they all? They came to a room and people, did anybody else watch the Twin Peaks series? Uh, like, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if I did. I don't remember. Bizarre things happened there at the end too, and and Blue Velvet. I think it got pretty bizarre at the end, also, didn't it, Pete? Yeah. Well, I mean, Dennis Hopper. <laughs> anything yeah. he's in is going to be kind of bizarre. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I, like I, the I, older I, couple coming under uh, out of the. Uh, oh the, yeah, that, I don't know. <laughs> As you little the, bitty the, people, yeah. I probably would have killed myself if I would have seen that too. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> would have stepped on. Yeah, step on them. Yeah, yeah. Them, yeah. fly yeah. swatter. Yeah, yeah. That that is very weird. And then some people said it was their her parents, and you know, that that was very strange. You oh. thought it was her parents, the way they all interacted when <clears throat> leaving yeah. the airport. Yeah. Yeah. Until he says, you know, it was so nice meeting you. Yeah. 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 So. The movie I was thinking of was Wild at Heart. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Is that a Lynch yeah. film? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Huh. I, just... I didn't know that. Huh. I remember watching it, but I don't remember it being a Lynch film. Hmm. Well, I think it was a good pick, Donna. I think, I think it was fun. Well, I'm it glad. Was oh, yeah, it was interesting. Good. Yeah, there you go. Well, I'm glad. You can't say it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, <that's for> sure. <laughs> what a dull movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's not dull. It's always questions. Um, Pete, did you? Uh, uh, are you going to watch the last 27 well, minutes? When, when we finish, I'll go finish it. Absolutely. I still got it dialed up on Prime. Yeah, for sure. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, hey, on Prime, do they tell you, do they give you trivia on the left-hand side like they do yeah. with a lot of their oh. movies? I, I haven't yeah. paid attention. They have. Yeah, I yeah, didn't they see do. any, but I don't know if I did it through Prime or what I did it through. Well, Prime. I was just wondering if they, were, if they would have, uh, you know, David Lynch uh, trivia on there and stuff and trivia about the movie and all that. Huh. They had some, the some stuff. extended well. arms of the little person were. <laughs> yeah. So, so what about the 10 questions? Well, um, you know, you, you just guys have to decide. I mean, this is what he, this is what David Lynch put in all the DVDs and their clues as to what it's about. And I don't know if it, that is re really true. The, um, the uh, the uh, it says pay particular attention in the beginning of the film. At least two clues are revealed before the credits. Um, I don't know. Well, I, mean, I, I think one of those is Diane is not in the uh, jitterbug the, the oh, that's dance true. contest. Oh, that's so that's a good right, point. Uh, that's you good know right point, off the Mike. Bat, yeah. Uh, so this is really all made up just from the get-go yeah yeah um and then the again the red lampshade is so two times you see the red lampshade is once when she's diane uh, diane and once when she's betty or you don't see betty um can you hear the title of the film that adam kesher is auditioning actresses for yeah it was the sylvia north story I have no idea what that means because oh, I looked right. up, is there a Sylvia North story? Is there a Sylvia North? No. So uh, it's just the movie that he was auditioning her for. If it, well, it, unless I, I think that it has something, to something do with for the, you guys. With the map I, I don't... Ontario, when you look at Ontario, uh, it Ontario means something like uh, North Woods or something like that. And uh -huh. the Sylvia is who has something to do with Diane, and so somehow that's connected. But I can't remember what it was. So I, I got uh -huh. that from the watched one of the thirty-five yeah, YouTube videos. Yeah, I can watch ago. any of those. 
I, I'm going to, though. Well, I might. Uh, <laughs> it says an accident is a terrible event. Notice lo the location. Well, yes, you know, the location of the accident. Wasn't that Mulholland Drive? or? Well, it's know? Mulholland Drive, and then it, it intersects with Sunset Boulevard. Right. And so then right. you have to start thinking about the movie Sunset Boulevard. I was exactly. Too. And it's the same idea. You know, you remember you have the dead body at the beginning of the movie, right. you know, and then it goes and it repeats. Um, who gives a key and why? Well, um, the key, the key was never given to Camilla. She just had it in her purse. The key that was given to um, to Diane was the hitman said when when it's done, that key will be in the place where you expect it to be. I think something like that. So, you know, I got it that yeah, uh, Camilla's dead or Rita or whatever you want to call her, and. Um, and, yeah, but uh, that's so straightforward. I mean, yeah, I know. It's not even a question. Yeah. I mean, that's what the guy um, said. And it must mean something else. Camilla? Well, that, the other that was key. My biggest question. There was a, the well, I thought was her aunt Ruth left the other key. Her, you mean the blue key? Yeah. No. I thought. I think she found it in her purse when. When, when when Camillo has or Rita has, you know, amnesia, or and in her purse, not only was the money, but oh, there was okay. also that blue okay. key. Yeah, right. But that's a strange key. Yeah. Um. Then there was uh, notice the row of the ashtray and the coffee cup. Okay. I again, maybe the colors. Because it was red, they were all red. Um, at Winkies? I, pardon me? At Winkies? Uh, no, the the robe was what Camilla had on when, uh, right before, you know, in that first part of the film, Camilla keeps on going to sleep, you know, and that's where you get this idea that everything's a dream sequence here and who's dreaming what. Uh, but She's in that red robe that that uh, Aunt Ruth had left for Betty. And she puts it on and is sleeping in that. Uh, the uh, ashtray, there's two ashtrays in the movie, three. There's the, the two scenes where it's kind of a mosaic red ashtray next to the red lamp. And then there's an ashtray that looks like a piano that that girl takes from Diane when she had left her stuff in the apartment she takes that um, piano uh, that I you know I don't know I don't know I wish I could tell you I know exactly what it means I don't know but I think there must they must mean something that girl uh, I, I had and I don't know where I got this at some point I thought they were together at one point, Diane and uh, the neighbor. You know, they had switched apartments. And uh, I got the sense, and I don't know where I got it from, that the two of them were together, like Betty and Rita were together. They, they, were, they had an affair, but and then it went away. Uh, the other question was, uh, did talent alone help Camilla? I don't think so. I think she, you know, she, it was the casting couch again. And, um, and where is Aunt Ruth? That's the last question. Where is Aunt Ruth? She's either dead or she's not. That's kind of how it is. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, but I'm glad at least we got a little, it is kind of an interesting film to discuss. I hope you guys, I, I promise I won't do it again. More, uh, promise not, I won't do it again. 
but I, I but I wanted I bet, to see what everybody would think about that film. So, Bill, let us know. But I bet this one gets more hits of our things that we post. Yeah, just because <laughs> yeah. of the title, handle, all the people that watch the thirty-minute videos are going to go, "Wow, look at this!" There's a whole discussion. <laughs> Here's another one. These <laughs> these guys know what's going on. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That league. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! I don't. I don't but, think our marketing department is getting the video out that well. <laughs> uh, we yeah. could say our our collective age is over six hundred. So you know. <laughs> that's right. So we know we know it all. There we know go. it all. That's right. <laughs> well, pretty anyway, good. Anyway, that's some. Um, who's who's next week? Yeah, that's a good who's question. Next week. I think it's a Gotta big gap. Be... Go from D to M. I guess so. Well, huh? It might be me. Yeah, Mike. Probably. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Are you the first of the M's? M A. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I picked up. Uh, I picked the uh, Tom Hanks movie Bridge of Spies. Oh yeah, good. Which was uh, directed by Spielberg. Yeah, I've never seen it. Oh, oh, well, you're in for a treat. It's good. what's it called? Bridge, Bridge of Spies. Bridge of Spies. It's a 2015 movie, loosely based on the prisoner swap that uh, that uh, got uh, Gary Powers, the the, uh, the U two pilot pilot that was shot down over Russia. Um, uh, repatriated in a prisoner swap uh, with gotcha. a Soviet spy. And that's uh, <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, it, 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 it's not a bad, uh, it's not a bad movie. Uh, I don't have any, any of the other details on it uh, immediately. Uh, handy. I don't want to award to one or any of that sort of stuff. I mean, I'll have that next week. But yeah. uh, you know where? Do you know where it's playing? Um, no, I didn't. Uh, didn't check that out. I'm presuming it's on all the usual suspects. Okay. Um, that'd be a good one. Yeah. Yeah. It is on, that is it a is good on one. Prime. For rent on Prime, Showtime. If you're a subscriber. Good. Now Paramount Plus Showtime, right? <clears throat> yeah, and twenty dollars. How about yeah, Max? Is it on Max? I wonder. Mm -hmm. I would say not if it's on Showtime. Yeah, that's probably right. All right, so They'd compete. Me and Mike Matson, we saw. Oppenheimer, right? And did you like it? Yeah, yeah. three-hour film. It, I mean, <laughs> hard to say it went fast. What? I, I wouldn't say it went fast, would you, Mike? I mean, a lot of it was just dialogue, you know, like, uh, but it was still real, real well put together. And I think it helps to have some history background, some at least a little understanding of what was going on in the 30s and the 40s yeah i'm going to see it on thursday on imax <laughs> someone said you need to see it on IMAX, on the biggest screen you can i don't know why they said that yeah, but... i've heard people say that i did bill, I... bill did you like that more or less than barbie <laughs> I'll tell you next week, Pete. I think... Are you going to see Barbie? <laughs> I, need, your I want you to know I'm wearing pink. I <laughs> no, everybody says everybody says don't take your granddaughter. Really? Yeah. To adult? To adult. Yeah. Is it R rated? No, I don't know how it could be R. I don't think it's R rated, but I think it has adult themes. I think it's <laughs> I think it's a little political in nature. I don't know. Huh. My sister didn't like it, but uh, other friends have, have really liked it. So, so I'm looking forward to it. I'll dress up in my Ken outfit. <laughs> Your pink Ken outfit? That's a visual I did not need, Bill. 
Now, how do I get that out of my mind? Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell, tell me what beauty you're going to. I don't know that I'm going to go to it, but I want to be outside in the club. We looked it up. Barbie was invented in 1959. 59. 59. And Ken was inv invented in 1961. Yeah, and un unfortunately, that co-developer is uh, M-A-T-S-O-N, not two T's. So uh, we're, on the, we're on the poor side of that one. Yeah. Hey, I got a Barbie joke. <laughs> oh, this uh -oh. would be good. Lady, 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 lady walks shut off the recording. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lady walks into a store hoping she can get a, a package deal, you know, like a two for one. And she asks, uh, does Barbie come with, with Ken? And the salesperson says, no, she only comes with G.I. Joe. <laughs> ah, boom, boom, boom. I'm here all week. <laughs> Tip your waiters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, you know, back, 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 to, back to Oppenheimer for a second. I've, I've read a couple of books uh, on uh, the making of the atomic bomb. One uh, by a guy by the name of Richard Roach, who's from here, here in Kansas City. It's a very good book. It's real thick and descends occasionally into, into nuclear physics. And so they're, pages that just you know kind of you, you gloss over but um yeah to your point about having a little bit of a back a background on it there are several major players uh in the development of the bomb besides uh uh besides oppenheimer and uh and wesley graves the the military general in in charge of it and some of those guys um end up uh being uh uh um Implicated in uh, in transferring uh, atomic secrets to the uh, to the Nazis or to the to the Soviets, yeah. and uh, anyway, if I if I remember right, what at least part of the movie goes through uh, the the Red Scare and Oppenheimer getting caught up in that, correct? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, there there were there were other guys uh, uh, th that. There was a, lot, a hell of a lot bigger and better case that they did in fact transfer nuclear secrets to the uh, um, uh, to the to the Soviets. Uh, uh, there was one guy by the name of Slizard for sure that was uh, suspected of it. And but he was it, huge in the development of the bomb. Right, right, and uh, uh, the the Rosenbergs are not part of uh, uh, not part of that, although they were they were badly framed on it. But uh, yeah, I mean there's. It, it, it's sort of like one of these movies with a with a multiple cast of characters. I suspect so. You, oh, it, so it helps to have, helps to have a little bit of background about the the players. And I would believe it, I haven't it, seen it yet, but I plan to. It, it goes through that whole repatriation of mostly uh, German Jews from Nazi growing Nazi Germany in the late thirties, and what they, they emigrated when they could, either to England or the U.S. But most of the great minds in physics were German. And obviously, the Aryan Germans stayed and developed the Nazi bomb. And the Jewish Germans emigrated here and had a lot of family and so forth that had moved to Russia as, as Nazi Germany got taken over. As the Soviets came to power, uh, that's where they suspect a lot of those intelligence secrets made their way back to family and so forth in the Soviet Union. Uh, there's a lot of talk about um, communist party meetings, primarily in college campuses and among faculty, and then about the McCarthy period. Uh, it, it's really interesting if you have a little bit of knowledge of that 30s, 40s, even into the 50s. Yeah. yeah, it goes into uh, some detail anyway of the relationship between Oppenheimer and uh, Albert Einstein. Yeah, makes it a really quite interesting movie. And, and the whole thing about uh, what's his name, Straws, the yeah, the, Robert Downey. Yeah, his, Robert Downey Jr.'s character, who was his um, arch rival. Um, <clears throat> when he was on the Atomic Energy Commission, when there became an Atomic Energy Commission. But yeah, it, I thought it was really good. And mm -hmm. I didn't notice the link. Uh, 
I was just kind of wrapped up in the history and what was going on. Pretty good story. I'm just so happy that people are going back to the theaters. I'm hoping that this is, you know, a way that's going, because I still love going to the theater. Yeah. 155 million for Barbie this weekend and eighty yeah. for Oppenheimer. And, and yeah, it was uh, 300 and some went overseas. I guess it opened overseas too. So I mean, it's just amazing. I, again, I don't know. I never, well, I never had I'm a just, Barbie I'm doll. just glad it's not a Marvel comic. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Well, I think, I, I think there are a lot of people who feel that way. I doubt yeah. I think, I think, <laughs> no, seriously, I think the bloom's off that rose. Yeah, I'm so tired yeah. of it. Get creative. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting initially, you know, one or, but boy, they just not went that, over. Not that Barbie time. is the height of creativity, but anyway, that there, we'll there's see not that. an ongoing story to Barbie. Yeah, <laughs> although they're talking about a sequel. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure they will. Yeah, so. I think it's uh, interesting that the that neither the writers nor the actors uh, uh, SAG that's out on strike are discouraging people from seeing things yeah. in the uh, in the theater. Yeah, they didn't show up at the premiere in London. Oh, but 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 has two unions. They're not discouraging the public from going back to the theater to see these. Yeah. So I haven't seen Barbie last? yet. I haven't seen Barbie yet, but. Wasn't it awfully hard to find an actress with hands and feet so small and no nipples? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was. And her fo her foot was always in the in the form of a high heel in it. She never flattened her feet out. They were always <laughs> high heels in high heels. Yeah. In plastic surgery, anything's possible. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Yeah. So something else just came up when you're talking about Oppenheimer that I'd never made this connection before the demonization of communism. You know, it was just such a bad thing. Well, why wasn't Nazism outlawed and the swastika outlawed after this war? What? I mean, that just now hit me. It's like, what? You know, well, coming down on the communist it, it, thing, and then what? you just let the Nazis. We we yeah. might not be in such bad shape that we're in right now, if they would just say, "Hey, look, no, no swastikas, no no Nazi party." Sorry, the, sw but. the swastika and the Nazi party were uh, were outlawed in Germany and maybe in some other Western European countries, right? <laughs> as well, right. but um, you know, I mean, they were such uh, they were such a um, they were so banned and and so detested that nobody imagined that you know uh, they would anybody that that sort of fascism would come back into any sort of fashion at all and so uh, they didn't feel like there's there was a, no need. A need yeah yeah a need to do it whereas with the communist par uh, party I mean you know Americans and uh, a lot of the West regarded it as an ex existential threat and. Uh, I, I don't think the Communist Party is outlawed in the United States, but it's pretty limited. Certainly demonized. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we got just a couple of seconds. Can I throw out a, a couple of sure. recommendations? Oh, yes. Uh, one, uh, Taylor Sheridan has written a, a series called Special Ops Lioness. Yeah, I watched that last night. You good. did? Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. I watched the first episode today, and I thought it was... well. Sheridan is, I don't know how he comes up with all this stuff, but he's really good. And so it's a eight-parter. It's on Paramount+. Plus. There's one, uh, Steven Soderbergh has done one called Full Circle. It's on Max, and it's six episodes. And this is a great crime mystery thing with so many twists and turns that uh, I don't see how you could not enjoy it. Uh, Soderbergh has really uh, done his thing on this one. And then lastly, and this is just for fun, there's a movie out called Llama Geddon. These are llamas Llama? from outer space who take over the world. The budget, <laughs> for this, the budget for this movie was $300. So <laughs> if you can find it and you need a few laughs, uh, it's starting to make the rounds. And they've already started Llama? a GoFundMe for alpaca lips. So <laughs> <laughs> that's. 
and I'll I'll back Arthur, now. Well, I got you here, Jeff. I wanted to let you know that I got a message from Elton Roberts, and he got the call. He's driving oh. to UW right now. Awesome. You're good. Yeah. So that's all I have. So Lama right. Gannon, did you watch this, this on your Romanian library? Card? No, I have not watched Lama Gannon yet. I did it's want available on Prime for two dollars and ninety nine cents rental. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I just haven't had time with all the things I watch, but I, it's on my list, and uh, it, it has. Right. I think it has. You know how they give you an IMDb rating? I think it has an IMDb rating of two, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe three. I can't remember. It's a. Uh, it's Mike. It's up to three point nine. Oh wow! Well, I'm looking at it right on. now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god! That's higher than that Amazon woman in the avocado jungle. Hey, uh, Mike, I'm looking at the cast. The first name that comes up in the cast is Louis the Llama. <laughs> <laughs> he plays. And the they llama. said we, they did it with three hundred dollars, and that included helicopter shots and explosions, and <laughs> they rented the llama. So, I thought the star was going to be Tina. Interestingly. It's a limited filmography for Louis the Lama. His only claim to fame is Lama Get. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought the one from uh, Napoleon Dynamite would be there. <laughs> I thought you guys might like that. One. Yeah. Well, and uh, right. after, after the mentions here, it'll probably get up to over four. <laughs> <laughs> you like your heart You love Lama Get. Yeah. See, see what this band of losers thought about. Uh, uh, Mulholland Drive and went, oh, uh, Lama well, Geddon. Yeah, let me check that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It did happen. Well, okay, gentlemen. All Next right. Time. Thank you. Hey, thanks for the movie. Yeah. Thank well, you. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks for all. letting me stay. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're going to have to pay up, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Next time.